All right. Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome. It is an honor to be together today. And in the strength of the Lord, we're here and we're ready to hear what God is saying to us as a church. Paul spoke some words to the believers in Rome in a very turbulent and troublesome time for them. And he spoke some rather surprising words to them that I want to read to you out of Romans chapter 13, verse number 1. You know at what point of history we stand. Now, take that in. Embrace that. You know what point of history we stand. So it is high time for you to rouse yourselves from sleep. For the final deliverance is nearer than when we first came to trust. Now, I want to read this in several versions for you. One version says the present time is of the highest importance. It is time to wake up to reality. Another one says, keep in mind the times that we are living in. Another version says, you know what a special time it is. Or you know how late it is that time is running out. And then you know well the times you are living in. It is time for you to wake up and see what is right before your eyes. And one more, yes, there is one more out of the Amplified that says you know what a critical hour this is. How it is high time now for you to wake up out of your sleep and rouse to reality. Paul is speaking to believers who are in a very turbulent time. And even though these words were written almost two millennia ago, they could have been written today. They could have been the same perspective. They could have been apropos. They could have been suitable for where we are right now. Because in our present world, things are topsy-turvy. We are in a continuing state of flux and fear. There is insecurity that abounds. There is a threat, it seems, on every side to our safety, to our security, and even to our sanity. You might well know that over the past two years that in our world, mental instability and depression and anxiety and suicide has skyrocketed in our world. There are, there's an instability. We are in pressing times and problematic times. That which we thought was right side up and would always remain right side up seems to have come upside down. And that which we thought would always be the way it is, is no longer the way it is. And there is pressing and pressure, and there is trouble and turbulence on every side. Now, we often find our security and our sense of safety in our surroundings. But what about now? Is there a word from the Lord as what Paul spoke, is there a word, is there a rhema from God for God's people? Is there a prophetic utterance? Is there a, a revelation for this house, for the people of this house in the midst of what we are facing and what we are standing in at the moment? Well, I want to give you today uh, just briefly some reminders these are things that you know 
But I like what Peter did. Peter got ready to give his readers some reminders, and this is what he said to them. In 2 Peter 1.12, you already know these things. You are very strong in the truth you have, but I am always going to help you remember them. In other words, I'm going to keep helping you to remember even though you already know them. So I want to just give you some reminders today, very briefly, that are things that you already know, but we need to be reminded of together again as a house. And the first one is this, God is still God and He is still our God. Here is what David said in the Psalms, Psalm 102, verse 25, You made the earth in the beginning, God, you started all of this. You made the heavens with your hands, and they will be destroyed, but you will always live. They will become old as clothing becomes old, and you will change them like a coat, and they will be changed. David said, listen, things are in a state of flux, things are changing, everything around God is in a state of flux and change. But then he said this, but you are always the same. Your years will never end. And I like one of the versions that said, you are always the same. Years cannot change you. And today I declare that my God is still on His throne. He hasn't taken a vacation. He hasn't gone to sleep. He's not in a state of slumber. He hasn't forgotten. He hasn't left the building. He hasn't uh, uh, lost a step. He hasn't missed out on anything. He is still ruling the nations as David declares. And he is greater than all of the earthly power and authority and dominion and might that is expressing itself in our world right now. He is still God and he is still our God in the midst of all that is going on. And no matter how much the course of this world becomes raucous and rebellious and acts against the Word of God. God is still God. He is still in control. And He is still my God. Reminder number one, He is my God. Number two, disturbances bring more God disturbances bring more God. One day we're going to wake up and remember the kingdom of God does not come lazily and sleepily and silently and softly. It comes dynamically. It comes with a shaking. It comes with a quaking. It comes with all kinds of noise. It comes with wars and rumors of wars. It comes with disturbance and turbulence and noise. The kingdom does not come silently. Now, when God uses disturbance to bring more of himself into this world. And if things are calm and peaceful and predictable and everything is at an even keel, that is not the time when God breaks through. God comes in the disturbance. He comes in the shaking. And so when the mountains shake and the valleys quake and the nations roar and the people rise up and the pandemic spreads all over everywhere, know that this is a promise of a new move of God. It is a promise of a now move. It is a promise of more of God. Please do not pray the disturbance away. You're wasting your breath. On Sinai, it was the shaking that brought God down. In Palestine, it was the shaking and the quaking and the disturbance that brought forth the Messiah. On the day of Pentecost, it was the noise and the shaking that brought the outpouring of the Spirit. 
and in that jail cell <coughs> in Philippi, it was the noise and the shaking that brought the power of God into that place. You see, the children of Israel had no idea the kind of God they were following when they left Egypt. They had no idea. They had seen some plagues. They had seen some demonstrations of power. But they had no idea. And they got to that disturbance called the Red Sea where it looked like they were going to drown and be pushed into the sea by the Egyptians. But it was there in that disturbance, in that noise, in all of that shaking that they discovered, Exodus 15, 3, the Lord is a man of war. You don't see God like that unless you've got disturbance. God loves disturbance. It brings the now move. And if we ever needed a now move of God, it's now. And number three, you and I are here for such a time as this. It is no accident. It is no mistake. There's not been some sort of heavenly malfunction. I am alive and well right now, and I just want to let you know I'm not going anywhere. I don't care whether I have four stints in my heart or not. I'm not going anywhere until Jesus takes me home. I am alive and well in this moment and in this hour because God has designed it from before the foundation of the world that you and I would be alive in this hour, in this moment, in this season. We have been placed here. We have been planted here. And we are not merely spectators. We are facilitators of the kingdom of God. We are not just minding the store. We are part of the move of God. And we're here for a purpose. Mordecai, I told Esther, he said, Don't you know that you have come to this place, into the kingdom, for such a time as this? We are not here to hide. We're not here to run. We're not here to cower in our homes. Half of the people who used to go to church no longer attend a church service because of the pandemic. What in the name of God has happened? We are the facilitators of the kingdom. And it is high time for us to be and do what God is calling us in this hour. There's nothing wrong. We were not born out of season. We're here for a purpose. And I want to give you today what I believe the high time is. High time. It means an advantageous time. It means a right time. But it also can mean an overdue time. In other words, when Paul said it's high time, he's telling them, listen, it is more than time. It's more. So let me give you what I believe is best I can tell is something that you and I can stand on prophetically in this season as a church. What do we stand on? What is our stance prophetically? Yeah, we know what the media is saying. We know what evangelicals are saying. By the way, don't listen to most of that garbage. Find out most of them have been in bed with the government. We need to hear God. We need to have a rhema from God, a prophetic 
foundation upon which we stand, that we will not be moved. And the first one is this. It's high time to gather what's ready. Now watch. I want you to put not your Sunday concentration on, not your regular sermon concentration on, but all of your focus and to hear what Jesus says. Listen to this in John 4, 35. When you plant, you always say, this is Jesus talking, four more months to wait before we gather the grain. But I tell you, open your eyes. Now, he's not talking about these. He's talking about an awakening in their spirit. An awakening in their faith. Open your eyes and look at the fields. And look at these next three words. They are ready. Repeat it in your spirit. They are are ready for harvesting now. Jesus is not talking about corn. He's not talking about grain. He's talking about people. And Jesus Christ is telling His disciples who we are, He is telling us, guess what? They are ready. Now what that means is that around you and around me, there are family members, there are relatives, there are friends, there are neighbors, there are co-workers that are ready to come in to the kingdom of God. They are ready to be invited to church. They are ready to encounter God. They are ready to see the presence of God. They are ready to have their lives turned upside down. They are ready. The problem is, We just don't believe it. This is why Jesus said, you've got to open your eyes. Isaac is a lot like us. God came to him and gave him this amazing word. And you will find it in Genesis 26.3. And this is what he said to him. Stay here in this land which, by the way, was a dry, barren, famous land. And I'll be with you and bless you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's all you need to know. When Jesus says to you, I'll be with you and I will bless you, it doesn't make a difference where you are. Because His Word is going to supersede wherever you are and whatever you're in. And God said to him, I am giving you and your children all these lands. What you're standing on, all this stuff here, all this barren, I'm giving you this. Now, God intended for him to believe that. He intended for him to own that. He intended for him to rise up and say, there is blessing in here because God has given this to me and God has declared that he will bless me and in this there is blessing. It's dry, it's dusty, it's barren, it's feminist, but God says it's blessed and there is something in this ground for me. There's fruit. That was verse 3. Then there is a verse 4. And a verse 5, and a verse 6, and a verse 7, and a verse 8, and a verse 9 and 10, and a verse 11. And God must have been looking down saying, did you not hear what I said? Finally, verse number 12. When... Isaac planted. God was waiting. When he planted, 
He reaped in the same year a hundred times what he had sown. Forget about the hundredfold for a minute. Why? Because the Lord blessed him. In other words, God had given him a word, just like Jesus declares to us, they are ready. Don't you let the enemy lie to you. Don't let your flesh lie to you. Don't let your previous experience lie to you. Jesus declares, they are ready. We're coming up on Easter. Great opportunity. Great opportunity. Seize it. Open your eyes and look. Why? Because they're ready. Reject anything that tells you they are not ready. Jesus says they're ready. Number one, we got to gather. We're the gatherers. And around you and around me, guess what? Oh, they're ready. They're ready. Pastor Wendy, they don't look ready. I know. Look at the ground. They didn't either. They're ready. Number two. Ready? Number two. It's high time to gain the kingdom. It's high time for us to gain the kingdom of God. It is time for us to lay hold of the kingdom in this place. I want to ask you, is this a time to hold back, tread water, wait and see, watch what happens, hang back, hesitate, or is this a time for us in the kingdom of God to bring it to bring all of our worship, all of our vision, all of our zeal, all of our passion, all of our joy, all of our ministry, all of our gifting, all of our enabling, all of our prayer, all of our intercession. It's the time for us to bring it. It is not the time to sit back. It is the time to seize the kingdom every time we gather. The kingdom comes. It is time, it's high time for us to bring our whole heart investment. Not reserved, not partial, not piecemeal, not halfway. It's high time to gain the kingdom that comes. Here is what Jesus, here's what God said to his people in Haggai chapter 1. Why is everyone saying it's not the right time for rebuilding my temple? They were having a tough time. Or one translation says, now isn't the time. Now why would God ask them that question? Here's why. Because... Cyrus had already given the word under the authority of God to send for the temple to be rebuilt. Now the Amplified is the one that puts brackets in the verse and adds this little bit. Although Cyrus had ordered it done 18 years before. You see, the people just didn't feel like it was right. Well, Pastor Buddy, things are just not right right now. I mean, we just need things to get back a little bit more normal. No, we need to bring it now. We need to do it now. We need to worship now. We need to pray now. Enough of the half-hearted milk toast, lukewarm, can't even tell you're a believer junk. When we're in His presence, we should rattle and shake this place. It's time to bring it. 
Here's what Jesus said. Luke 12, verse 29. What I'm trying to do here is get you to relax. <laughs> Does it sound like it? <laughs> Not be so preoccupied with getting so you can respond to God's giving. People who don't know God and the way He works fuss over these things. But you know both God and how He works. Steep yourself in God reality. God initiative. God provisions. You'll find all of your everyday human concerns will be met, which is what the enemy loves for us to be distracted by and overwhelmed by. Don't be afraid of missing out. You're my dearest friends. And then he said this, the Father wants to give you the very kingdom itself. I declare today that it is high time for the kingdom to come in this place like we have never seen before. It is high time for an explosion of the kingdom of God. One more. It's time to give a good report. Those 12 men went into the land. They all saw the same cities, the same inhabitants, the same fruit, same giants. Everybody saw the same movie. But when they came out, they had two different reports. Why? Because the report that you give is your choice. And here is what it sounded like. In Numbers 13, 30, Let's go at once to take the land, Caleb said. Oh, isn't it unfortunate that it doesn't say all of them said. Now watch. We can certainly conquer it. But the other men who had explored the land with him disagreed. We can't. Oh, let me back that up. Caleb said, we can. They said, we can't. We can't go up against them. They're stronger than we are. So they spread this bad report about the land among the Israelites. It's high time. It is high time that this house gives a good report about our church situation. Regardless of the season that we are in, we give a good report. It is high time that we give a good report about our building situation, regardless of the demands that we're facing. We give a good report. It is high time we give a good report about the members of this house, regardless of the affliction and the weakness and some of the, the stuff that we've been through. It is high time we give a good report. It is high time that we give a good report about this economic situation that we're in with all the inflation and all of the stuff that's going on. We choose to give a good report. It is high time. When is the last time you gave a good report about this house, about what is happening? It's high time. Caleb said, we can certainly conquer it. But Pastor Buddy, what about this? We can certainly conquer it. Well, what about that? We can certainly conquer it. It is high time to put a good report on our lips about everything that we see. Because what God says supersedes what we see. And in the name of Jesus, 
just as they could have conquered it with a good report. So do we conquer it. It's time. It's high time. It is high time that we gather what's ready. Come on, you, me, us, them, all of those. It's high time. And it's high time that we bring it because it's time to gain the kingdom. It's time to bring it all. Paul said this is a special time. It's a critical time. A time of high importance. Time is late. It's time to bring it without being told, without being prodded. I'm going to bring it. My whole heart investment, we should knock the top off this double portion. Bring it. It's time. And it's time, high time, to give a good report about your situation. What is your situation? Are you rehearsing like those ten men? We can't. I don't know what I'm going to do. Prices go up anymore. No! I speak a good report. We can certainly conquer it. In Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you that everything that you give us to stand on, to declare, to hold fast to, to run with, it's all you. It's all true. And we can certainly conquer whatever it is. We conquer it because we choose to believe you. We're opening our eyes right now. We're purposing to look, to open our eyes, and believe you. That around us, they're ready. They're ready. Regardless of what the facts look like, regardless of what circumstances seem, we declare today, Jesus, you've said they're ready. And I expect to see it. I expect it. It's high time. For me to bring it. This is no time to hold back, hang back, tread water, float downstream. It's time to bring it. We need to see the kingdom in its full manifestation. Your kingdom come in this place. Oh God, and it's time. God, today I changed my tune. Today, I put a good report on my lips. Regardless of that or this or the other, we can certainly conquer it. In Jesus' name. Speak it into your situation. A good report. I've thrown off labels of infirmity and weakness upon my body, and I declare in Jesus' name I have a good report. I'm healthy, I'm whole, I'm free, 
I'm invigorated. I've got more than enough energy, more than enough strength, more than enough anointing for whatever the challenge. And I thank you, God. It's high time. Time is a-wasting. It's high time. In Jesus' name, amen.